Hello everyone. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you a full cycle of video editing in OpenShot, or I'm going to create this 15 second product preview video. This video consists of five segments and is made from these four short video clips, an image file of type PNG, and an audio file. I'll show you each one of these video clips and the image file later as we edit each segment so that you can see the difference between before and after editing. So without further ado, let's get started. First, I'll make sure the Project Files tab is active. And then I'm gonna add all these files to the project simply by dragging and dropping them onto Project Files tab. If I right-click any one of the video clips and open its file properties, you will see that they have a standard HD resolution of 1280 by 720 and a frame rate of 30 frames per second. So next I will make sure that the project profiles is set to standard HD of 30 frames per second. Now let's begin the actual editing step by creating the first segment, which is the video's title. So go to the menu bar and then click title. On the title submenus, you may choose to add either a static title or an animated title. If you want to create an animated title, you will need to have another app called Blender installed on your PC and linked to OpenShot through a setting on the OpenShot's preferences. Please also take note that, depending on your computer specs, the rendering of an animated title made from these templates may take a few hours to complete. So for this tutorial, I'm just going to add a static title, which is basically an image of text of type SVG. On the Static Titles dialog, first choose your preferred title template. For this exercise, I'm going to select the camera border template. Then on the right pane, type in the title of the video and the image file name of that title text. You may change the type and size of the font by clicking the change font button. If you want to use different colors, you may also change the colors of the title text and its background. But for this exercise, I'm just going to leave them white and black. Then click save. Now as you can see here on the project files, OpenShot creates a vector image file of type SVG for the video title we set up just now. The next step will be adding this title text image to the timeline and set its duration to 4 seconds. To set the title's duration to 4 seconds, go to the Clip Properties panel, look for the end property and change its value to 4 seconds. For easier and accurate placement of the playhead on the timeline later, we can zoom in the timeline by shortening the zoom slider. Then I will make this title fade in in the beginning of the video. So I right click on the title clip, and then I select fade, start of the clip, and fade in slow. Now if I play the clip from the start, you will see that the title fades in slowly in the beginning of the video. The next step is adding the first video clip to the timeline's track 1, after the title clip, for the second segment of the video. This is a 4 second video that looks like this. But as you can see in the final video, the transition from the title to this video clip is animated nicely with a luminous spiral effect. To do that, first place the playhead at the 2 second mark of the timeline ruler. To place the playhead accurately at the desired point on the timeline, you can use the left and the right arrow keys on the keyboard to move the playhead left or right, one frame at a time, as I'm showing you right now. Now drag the video clip to the left and snap its start frame onto the playhead so that it partially overlaps the title clip. OpenShot will automatically add a fade transition effect over the two clips overlap. To change the transition effect from fade to your preferred effect, click the transition and then go to the transition properties. On the transition properties, right click the transition source property, select transitions, and then select the desired transition. For this exercise, I'm gonna use the luminous spiral 10, which is under the transition group 9. Then to create an illusion of the camera moving closer to the box and going inside it, we will add zoom in and fade out effects to the end of the second clip. I will make the zoom in effect animation last for 1 second, from a zoom factor of 1 to a zoom factor of 10. So to add a zoom in effect, first place the playhead 1 second to the end of the second clip. Then go to the clip properties panel and look for the scale x and scale y properties. Insert the start keyframes of the zoom in animation on both properties. Now go back to the timeline and move the playhead to the end of the second clip by clicking the next key point button on the timeline toolbar. After that, go back to the clip's scale x and scale y properties one more time. Double click the property value and then type in a zoom in scale factor of 10. 
To make the zoom-in effect look fast in the beginning and slower towards the end, change the interpolation mode to Bezier ease out. Repeat these steps for the scale Y property. And then to add a fade-out effect, go back to the timeline and move the playhead 0.5 second or 15 frames to the end of the clip. Now go to the Clip Properties panel, look for the Alpha property at the very top, right-click the property and then click Insert Keyframe. Go back to the timeline and move the playhead to the end of the clip. On the Clip Properties panel, change the Alpha value to 0 and set its interpolation mode to Bezier Ease In. This will add a 0.5 second fade-out effect that starts only halfway into the zoom-in animation, or after the camera is as if close enough to the box. Now if we play the video from the beginning, we should have something like this. Alright, the next step will be adding the second video clip, which is a two and a half second clip, to the timeline. Since at the end of the previous clip the camera is as if going inside the box, to make a smooth transition from the second clip to this third clip, we'll add an effect to this clip, that will make it as if the camera is moving backward out of the box. To achieve that, we'll add a 0.5 second fade in effect to the beginning of this video clip. So first, move the playhead to the start of the clip, by clicking the previous key point button on the timeline toolbar. Then go to the clip properties panel, look for the alpha property, and change its value to zero. Now go back to the timeline and move the playhead 0.5 second or 15 frames to the right. Go back to the clip's alpha property one more time, change its value to one, and set its interpolation mode to Bezier Ease Out. Now if we play the video, we should have something like this. Next, let's add the third video clip and make it overlap the second video clip for one second. I'll change the transition effect from the default fade to circle out to an. Now before we continue, let's take a look at the final video one more time. As you can see here, as the video moves into the fourth segment or the third video clip, it shows a product specs panel sliding in from the left of the screen. The panel stays on the screen until right before the third video clip sliding out to the left to make way for the fourth video clip. To achieve all these effects, first you'll need to create a product specs image of the video's resolution, which for this example, is 1280 by 720 pixels. The image can be of type PNG or SVG, as its background needs to be transparent. Now to add the sliding panel, first I'll create a new track above the main track. Then I'll move the playhead to the end of this transition, drag the panel image to the timeline's track 2, and snap its left end to the playhead. To set its duration, first I'll move the playhead to 25 frames to the end of the third video clip on track 1. Then I simply click and drag the end of the panel image clip to the left, until it snaps onto the playhead. To add a sliding in animation to this panel image, First move the playhead to the start of this panel clip. Then click and hold on the video preview, and drag to the left until the panel is hidden. You may further refine this panel image's location by directly changing its location X and Y properties values on the clip properties panel. Go back to the timelines track 2, and move the playhead 0.5 second or 15 frames to the right of the start of the panel clip. Now change the panel clip's location X property value to 0 and set its interpolation mode to Bezier Ease Out. To add a sliding out animation to the panel image, move the playhead to 15 frames to the end of the clip. Then go to its location X property, and insert a start keyframe. After that, move the playhead to the end of the panel clip, and then change its location X property value back to its initial value when the panel was hidden. Set the interpolation mode to Bezier Ease In. Now if we play the video, we should have a sliding in and out panel overlay like this. The next step will be adding the last video clip, which will be the last segment of our product preview video. So I click and drag the video clip, but this time I'm placing it on track 2, right after the panel clip. To make it more interesting, we'll use a sliding in and out animation for the transition from the fourth segment to this final segment. To do that, place the playhead at the start of the fourth video clip on track 2. Now go to the clip properties panel and change this clip's location x property value to 1. Go back to the timeline, move the playhead 3 frames to the right, and then click the third video clip on track 1. Then insert a start keyframe to this clip's location x property. 
After that, move the playhead to the end of the last clip on track 1. Change its location x property value to minus 1 and set its interpolation mode to Bezier Ease in Expo. Now click the last clip on track 2, move the playhead 4 frames to the left, and then change its location x property value to 0. Set its interpolation mode to Bezier Ease in Expo. As this clip is the last segment of the video, I will also add a fade out effect to the end of this clip. Alright, the last things that I'm gonna add to this video is the music or soundtrack. To add a music or sound to a video, first create a new track for the sound. So let me just add a new track below track 1. Then simply drag the sound or music file to the track. To cut off the extra duration, first place the playhead at the end of the last video clip. Then right click the sound clip, select slice, and then click keep left side. And as a final touch up, add a fade in effect and a fade out effect to the beginning and to the end of the soundtrack respectively. Now let's play the whole video and see how we've done. Alright, the last step of the video editing cycle is exporting the video into a playable format. To do that, click the export video button on the toolbar. On the export video dialog, type in the exported video file name and browse the folder where it is to be saved. On the simple tab, select the desired video profile. For this exercise, I'm just gonna select web. Then I will select YouTube standard as target and HD 720p 30 frames per second as video profile. As for the quality, I will select high. Please take note that your profile and quality settings will determine the size of your final video file. If you want to adjust the video quality level further, click the advanced tab and then click video settings. Change the bitrate value such that you get a manageable file size without compromising the video quality. Once you're okay with the settings, click export video. All right, so that's how to edit the full video in OpenShot. I hope you find this tutorial useful, and thank you for watching.